A lot of this stuff we do here is all right in front of your face. So let's bring this line down here and see if we like that better. Not really, maybe it's a little too far down. You make a mistake, like I think I went too far there. Just fix it. Because in my head, this isn't it. This isn't the, the outline of everything. The outline's gonna be out here more, especially if I throw some weird shit behind it. What you can do, there's options, man. There's so many options. Just to save yourself some uh, headache from trying to be perfect. Because I think a lot of people are like, dude, I can't get those perfect lines. No one really can, but I think uh, knowing your paint and how fast it's spraying, this is a uh, high pressure actually, this one. And I'm moving a little quicker. With those 94s that we usually use, this is a hardcore. That 94s that we use are low pressure, right? Yeah. And you really can't even go that fast with them. Like sometimes you spray those too fast and it's just a dusty ass line. And with these ones, you can get like those well, I don't know. That one's not a great example because of, I'm using an old tip and everything, but um, when it comes down to flares, high pressure is a lot better for flaring. Yeah, the, um, you can do them real slow, you know? Like, and see, you see how messed up that, let me get a good one. Yeah, I just took it off another can over there. It's simple, you know what I mean? It's like, you just hold it farther away and then you get close. I always scrape the wall. Like, my fingertip always is in, the, in somewhere in there because it's like, I'll do shit like that and scrape the wall. Yeah. So you got this outline, right? I always 3D shit, no matter what. Uh, yeah, while the sketch is there. I don't waste too much time on uh, this technique. It's good because you can do these lines carefree. And fix them. These layers are gonna be there, bro. It's like, um, do your 3D now. And you know the concept of 3D, right? It just everything just goes the same way. Just keep dropping it. See, like you can you can do that line just to make sure. Okay, it goes there. Boom, bring that one down. And then from there, yeah, like I just wipe that shit out there. My homie once told me it's not a race, which means I used to do this and it would drip and all this crazy shit and then I would mess something up and I'd bring the, the other can and I would try to fix it real quick. It's not a race because you do that too much, you got this big old blob of paint that's just dripping. It's not sitting flush with the wall like everything else will. That's like less touched, you know? You fuck up, let it sit there for a second. Remember it, but let it sit there, let it dry move on because you could throw off your whole damn groove by being all fixated on that right so from here just sketch out man sketch sketch out that line that you want you're doing your outline last or, or first i guess here so from here Boom, right up there. Got 
That's exaggerated. Right? You don't gotta do all that. No, nah, but that motion is kind of for real though, because you're not doing like that a lot, you know? When you're painting out there and whatever, you know, you're trying to go as big as you can, so you're doing stuff like that. But when you're doing something right here for the kids and you want those straight lines, you kind of want to be right in front of that shit. And to make straight lines sometimes, you have to move your body, like kind of like coast with it or something. I don't know, like there's things that you can do to make your lines a lot cleaner. And I'm not the best at it, but I always try to keep it in mind, right? Like even that line, I don't like that line. I'll go more up and I fucked that up, so move on. That's an ugly line. Move my body a little bit more with that one. Go all the way through sometimes, you know? What I'm doing here is I'm just making this line thicker. technique that I used to like from the street, you know, graffiti fools back then. They do like a quarter fill with the fat tip, right? technique gets the majority of it covered and then the rest of it you just kind of like haze over you know make sure it gets all up in there but yeah like filling stuff in sometimes you'll you'll see it sometimes on the finished product you fill something in like this and then right here you do it up and down and it's the same color, but there's something wrong with it, right? If you do it like that, I think it gives a, a nice solid uniformity. Just fix little things like, I don't like how you did that. It's all good because you still got black, right? Now you don't, you, the, the goal is to can control before you have to make all those mistakes, but that's the way you learn, brother. And you'll find, you know, like you got the can control. I saw your, your lines that you were pulling at that last school there. I know you got it. it. Doesn't have to be a background. It could be this. And then from there, outline everything, right? All that space. The towel, just go right over it. Because when you know what you're, you're gonna layer it as, you already know where the lines go. It's all good, like you're not stressing so hard about little things like that. So just that little one outline looks shitty, right? Whatever, you got a thinner tip now.
And it's hard to say, like, you're probably watching me do this line, like, oh shit, I don't know. Bro, as you're painting, you don't have to paint fast, right? But as you're painting, you're gonna gain confidence throughout the piece. Like that's, I promise. I don't, I don't know like if, if it's the same for everyone, but as I paint, I always get a little bit more confident, more ballsy and like, that's like, I'm not moving so much. I'm just like leaning into it. And now I made a thick line with a, with a thin tip. That's, so it's a lot easier than making it with a, a fat tip, you know what I'm saying? And then you fuck up, come back to it. You got that black hand still? That movement of not like your arm all by itself but your body keep that on like like smalls you know fucking uh, sandlot put the glove in the air and then you just gotta drop your weapon you know what I'm saying <laughs> you know what I'm saying <laughs> you know what I'm saying like when you're moving keep that arm stiff right like when you want those straight lines. I think that's a good thing too, is rounding stuff out, like outside things. This is good squared. You want those squared, right? But stuff like that is kind of a pain to keep because once you need to fix it, it's round again. Just make them all round, you know? Little things like that will save you from a headache. Trying to make everything perfect. That's me. Like, I'm kind of OCD with this. Yeah, well, I think a lot, a lot of us are very OCD with this. I fucked that up on purpose so I could fix it. Just the layers of everything, you know? It's all good if, uh, like this one's all kind of crazy with stuff, so the black just blends it all in. Because you can always just keep fixing and fixing and fixing. I think what you were focused on on that last one where um, the blue kind of trailed off, it was like there was no fixing it once if you fucked it up. You know what I'm saying? But there is, there is a way. That's what I'm trying to point out. Like to fix it, just have some pain on, on either side of it. If you want that line to be perfect, make sure it's fixable. Cause you can set yourself up like that to where it's like, oh hell yeah, that works. Here, you're shaping it from the inside, just like those damn letters, man. But to keep it perfect is like, not the point of this. It's like, more for character, I would say. And you kind of want to cut into these things, like, get deep in it. And if you feel like, okay, like this, this line needs to be thicker, you can always add it back.
There ain't no mistakes that can't be fixed with these things. Kind of looks like a stencil, you know? But you're just like cutting yourself up. Like, yeah, that's all. You're just doing all these little lines there. If you feel like your shit's choppy, you can do the whole piece choppy. And it might just fucking look good, you know what I'm saying? I used to leave stuff like that on purpose because I knew I didn't want to make it all perfect. Like for street spots. And it would look sick, like, like I did it on purpose, but I didn't mean for it to look that good, you know? Like some of the really choppy stuff. I mean, if you want that perfect portrait stuff, maybe I'm not the one for you to teach you how to make it all beautiful. But like, just for technique wise, like be fearless with it. Cause you never know what's gonna be like your favorite thing. And for me, I don't like that stencily look. So if I, if I like how the outline is like, to make it thicker. I try my best to stay away from the black line that's already there, just to the outside of it. Like I said, man, you don't gotta do nothing that uh, I'm doing, but I hope it helps you with whatever you're doing. Like if you're gonna, if you're gonna drop backgrounds, like I've seen you, like the first time I met you, you were doing these really long, long things. You know what I mean? Like drop all that first, that way it's there and it's straight. Everything from back to front needs to be done in that order, because like. Let's say I wanted this character to be up front in front of these letters. Those letters gotta be there first before I do it because I'll do this character and then I try to do these letters. There's a lot of shit I don't wanna touch now. Like I'm done, I don't wanna touch that no more. If I start doing something behind it, I'm gonna have to fix stuff. Save yourself that heartache and do it like that. Um, like the way I fixed the outside of this, I wouldn't have done that hazy stuff before I did all that, you know what I mean? Like, would have fixed it, and then now I would have hazed it if I wanted that haze back there. Just kind of like be careful with it, I guess. Because then you got all these cuts that you can definitely see. Those layers, man, they're important. 